Good morning, people of the internet. Welcome <laughs> to a new uh, Playing with Beethoven live uh, this morning. I apologize for whatever happens in the next 25 minutes because I am on with one of my bestest friends in the whole world, Malia Molino. Hello. We show we do um, pretty much every Monday when I'm not slacking. <laughs> Malia was our uh, makeup artist for the whole show, and she also played the character of Liz, which was Josh's roommate. And um, here's an interesting story to start the morning off to make everybody out there understand what kind of drama we deal with in our tech side. Yeah. So I went to our footage, our original project file, to find your original scene with Josh, the apartment scenes, because I wanted to show anything we had cut and show the full scene. And... Um, it says project file corrupted. I oh. it. So luckily we're at the phase now where we have the full film that we have and it's done and we, you know, there's no editing and we have to use that. But, um, yeah. So heck, heck go back and, and bring back in. It's very sad, but it was fun. I'm glad you did this movie with us. Um, do you have anything you do you remember any stories from set that were like, you know, funny or silly or I, you were with Naomi and Eric all the time. There has to be something. That I mean, yeah, I was going to say, I think that the joy of this film was working with the two of them. And, you know, I kind of felt like half the time I was more of Naomi's Wrangler than her makeup artist. Um, and she's just she's one of those people. Sorry, I have like a hair. It's annoying the hell out of me. Okay, got it. Um, she's one of those people that's just absurdly beautiful, like almost distractingly beautiful. And she's, I think, you know, it was really important for us to make her look, you know, like a teenager. Like she shouldn't be overly done up, but she loved makeup. So that was half my thing of constantly being like, no, sweetie, I'm telling you, you look perfect. You look probably too pretty for this role right now already. We don't need to add more. She's like, more, more mascara, more mascara. And I'm like, you don't need any more mascara. You look amazing. <laughs> so I think it was just, it was that. It was watching this kind of chaotic tornado wrapped in this <laughs> package. And she would, you know, it was just so much fun, I think, to watch her and Eric on screen. And obviously, I loved the live music because it was a different experience than I've ever had on a set. But I think because she was this chaotic tornado, when you would get her on set and get her to focus and she's actually performing, you're like, she's great. Like, she was so great that it was, you know... Well, obviously, hopefully on set, we always see great performances, but there's the ones that I think that actually stop you in your tracks when they're so dropped in and kind of feels like left field because the person you know is just so polar opposite. But that manic energy she had brought that like youthful, charming elegance to this character that I think we were all just taken by. So I just liked the journey. I liked the journey of yeah. the actors. Uh, Summer Walters, our executive producer, is on. Says, "Good morning, good morning, good Summer. Morning. Thanks for always joining us and being so supportive as we've gone along this long journey together." <laughs> I mean, one of the things we always talk about with Naomi is how it was her first movie, so there was a lot of things where she didn't know. You know, this is why you have to wear that same thing or do exactly the same thing. But I have gotten so many compliments from people who've watched the film, pro festival programmers, and such. They're like you have a star there. So, you know, hopefully she keeps at it. And yeah. Yeah. It, it was obnoxious, honestly. Like she was just, it's just one of those people you're like, really? Wow. Like she's just, she's an enigma. I've never met anybody like her before or after. Like she is a very special kind of person and I love her. <laughs> I think when you're the makeup artist not so for the world just so you know malia is actually a producer with me she produces anything i can make her do <laughs> i'm like you're not you're not busy great come do this uh she is an actor first and foremost and very funny and very talented i highly encourage you to go watch her reel and laugh at her and send her um <laughs> about how funny she is and also dramatic like you you've actually have both sides of that um all that said this is this was probably one of your longest makeup jobs as far as like being on set, because often you tend to take the quick jobs just in between your acting gigs and such. Yeah. 30 days. 
Um, so you really kind of get the be the behind the scenes glimpse, even things I don't know that are happening. You saw everything going on from beginning to end. You knew any fire, you knew all the fun stuff. Like, I guess that's the fun part about the job you did for our set, I would think. Yeah, no. And I think it's always interesting jumping onto a feature versus a quick job because you know, you do a quick couple, you know, you do a quick job and you can kind of play more. But when you're doing a feature or a show, you have to develop looks like you are literally developing a character. And I think it becomes, you know, in week two, you're usually in muscle memory. And sometimes I think the actors can get a little antsy because they want to change up their look or they get anxiety if we are changing up their look. So like for this film, Obviously, we're following teenagers. She's going to have her look. And because she's a person one, that loves it's one day, the yeah. whole thing is pretty much one day. So they're definitely getting bored, I'm sure, with what yeah, they're putting on. Look. So the couple of times we got to play with her makeup, she was so excited. And that is kind of the fun thing. But what I do enjoy about films like this is you really do get to know the actors. But I always say, like, you know, your job is more of that of a therapist than of a makeup artist, like, because I do hear everything and, you know, you have to deal with the, you know, everybody on set sees the performance, sees the takes, but then I deal with the aftermath of like, do you think that was good? Did I get enough takes? I should have got one hour take. And then it's like, and you're calming them down and knowing, okay, I have five minutes to make this change. And I got to get you back on set. There's like 50 people waiting for you to get back on set. So it's, but with the feature, you do become this giant, you know, convoluted family so it makes the harmony a little bit better it makes it a little bit easier so you can tell them like i need you like, i love you but please just sit your ass in the chair i need to i need to get you back on set and there's that comfortability you get with the family which is why i do like features but like especially one like this where we are doing the course of a day and i'm not doing like, you know 15 makeup changes in 12 hours <laughs> that's nice you get bored if you're like it's just like, ah, it's the same look all day, every day. It's definitely, uh, yes and no. I think it depends on the angle of which you're coming from. Like for me, probably because makeup isn't my number one thing. Like, yeah, creatively, it's not fulfilling when you're doing the same look because it is muscle memory. You're just going to, you're dipping into your palettes, you're applying the makeup and you're not even thinking about it. They're just done. But if you are a person like me that just genuinely loves being on set and loves watching the process, I almost like that because I'm not having to focus too much in one arena. Like I have my job, I have my position and I'm doing it, but I also, it frees up time for me to enjoy the environment more than being really stressed out and constantly having to figure out a new look to do. And then making sure, of course, talent's happy, director's happy and so on and so forth. Our, the first feature film Malia and I worked on together, where she was makeup artist, was insane. We were required <laughs> to shoot a film in seven days, a feature film, yeah. and we had to give do cancer looks on a, a young lady. Yeah. And it was literally like, now you have to go to level four. Oh, crap, now you got to go to level two because it just was the nature of the beast of how we had a film in seven days. <laughs> that had one of the most ridiculous, stressful shoots that you've been on. Oh yeah. And you know, you and I both know the drama that surrounded that particular set. And, you know, I remember very specifically the, the most stressed out I think I've ever been on a set was because my setup in the house was in the basement. And I, we had to go from, you know, like, cause we broke down the cancer into stages so we could know in the script, what, like what level of sickness she was looking. And so we had gone from a level one to a level four. And I think we had 10 minutes to do it. <laughs> and like, you know, this is like really towards the end of her life. It's a dramatic change. I'm in this basement. One of the actors is literally holding her phone up for light for me. And I have, a <laughs> and I'm like painting her body and all of this drama is ensuing. And it's like, I think it was maybe our second to last day of filming. Like the gun couldn't have been closer to my head. And I was just being like, this is insane. Like, why are we doing this? What is happening? But then it's done. And you know, I think that the, the struggle there always is I'm confident in my ability to work fast. I've had to work fast by the nature of a lot of our shoots. I've gotten very good at being fast, but the actor feels when they're being rushed. And since it's my job to make sure they feel their best 
or I mean, you know, if you're going to stage four cancer, not your best, but they definitely <laughs> <laughs> like they're dropped into the character. I have to, you know, kind of muzzle my anxiety and my stress to make sure they're still getting to go through their process and feel like they're still getting their moment so they don't feel like oh crap she just rushed this job and it's probably half ass and now i have to go on screen and feel comfortable so it's just it's it's a it's a really intense balancing act when you are any of the jobs whether with hair makeup or wardrobe where we are dealing one-on-one -on -one with the talent helping them build their character but also making sure that they feel good on screen and you're dealing a lot of time obviously with a lot of fragile egos it's exhausting <laughs> it's a job i never even thought about that like because as a director i'm always like trying to make sure the crew when we're about to film is like respectful of the space so if it's a dramatic scene and they have to cry it's like everybody can we just be quiet and give them their time I never really thought about how much pressure is put on the makeup artist to always be in a position of, because you're literally in their close space. You're, you're yeah. transferring to them anything you feel. You're touching their faces. So like if you are have anxiety or if you're in a bad mood or anything, it can really affect the set. So you have to be in an overly like, I, I'm not overly bubbly for this scene, but I'm I'm here and I'm confident. Like there's a lot of emotions you must go through in a day. It is, and it's hard. No wonder you don't want to do that job anymore. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's a lot. Like, it's a lot. And then also, it's just, especially, I think, being an actor, I understand the process. So I always feel bad. Like, there's been times when, you know, we just have wrapped an emotional scene. And, of course, we're going into, like, a bubbly scene or a more upbeat scene. But they're still coming out of that scene. But I have to change their makeup. I have to get them cleaned up. But they're still acting crying but I have 10 minutes to make this change so I have to walk this weird fine line of like I know I'm so sorry I want to give you time I'm here like what can I do you're getting the cold spoons you're doing whatever the hell you need to do but also like please stop crying because I have to make this change it, it, it's just yeah I mean you have to I think I think especially when it comes to makeup Yes, it's good to love the craft and the art, but you have to love people because if you don't love people and if you don't understand emotion and how to read people, like you need to be able to walk into a trailer, a room, a basement, wherever you're set up and know like this actor needs me to be quiet. I just need to do my job or this is a person that I can tell it's nervous and I need to help bring them out of that shell so they're ready when they get to set. Like we really are that fluffer and if if they have a bad experience with us first they're gonna have a, like they're not gonna be in a good mood when they get to set which means all eyes are on me and i've let down the team so it's about doing whatever you have to do to make sure talent is happy which is a lot of pleasure it is a lot much it is a lot more than just applying product to their face i love that and i love that you shared that for everybody for all indie filmmakers watching to like really pay attention to the personality of the makeup artist you're hiring and and like, if you don't love them and they don't make you happy, because that's one thing about you, when you get on set, Malia, like, I always know if you're on set, we're going to be laughing and, and be happy and having a good time. So that's probably why I make you come produce things. <laughs> I'm like, sit here and deal with the fires so I could just direct. <laughs> I like it. I mean, but that's the fun. I think, I mean, I said a million times, if you can't find the enjoyment, you shouldn't be doing this because it's, it's stressful. What we're doing, like, yeah, it's make believe we're certainly not curing cancer, but it's stressful. Like there are real problems that come up at the end of the day, we're playing in the realm of make believe. And so if you can't find the joy in that, like step out the way, it's like being a bad teacher. It's like, there's a lot of great teachers looking for a job. If you don't like it, leave. So another teacher can come in. So I read on Twitter or somewhere that you finished writing your own feature film. Mm -hmm. it, what, what, what you want to tell everybody what your film's about and, and what <laughs> You in rewrites now? What are you doing? I'm, I've stepped away from it for the moment. Um, I feel really happy with it. Uh, it's a Christmas script because, you know, I needed a happy, I think, you know, all of us are dealing with our own versions of anxiety and stress and depression probably about the state of the world, the country and all of that jazz. And at the beginning of everything, I started writing a book about what it was like to live through a pandemic. And I was all excited about that until I started getting really angry on the page. And I realized this is 
trash because it's so one sided. There's no there's no I was so biased that it wouldn't be enjoyable to read and it was just making me angrier. And so finally, I had a random idea for honestly, ironically, it's based off of a, a story I had written when I was in high school around a cannoli shop. <laughs> so random. And I just started writing and it was one of those interesting, it was more of an experiment, I think to myself, because it's easy to get carried away. And I certainly get carried away with my writing, but I was specifically writing with the context of like, what would this story that I wrote look like in that, like a Hallmark like box. Yeah. So with those parameters, it was actually really freeing in a way that I didn't expect because I couldn't go outside of certain lines. And so it was just this really fun experience. And because of that, because I had guidelines, I just, it just came out and I was one of those things where I was like, I'm just going to do this. And now I really like it. So now it's just that thing of thinking, you know, what the hell, what the hell do I do with this? Uh, but I think this movie, we make that stuff. Why am I asking for this? It should have been put in my inbox. I know. I know. I know. I'll send it. I'll send it. It's, it's an early Christmas present. It's a Hallmark movie, but we got to find a way to put some kind of Santa Claus in there. Right. That's got to. See, okay. magic. <laughs> there's another script that I started writing that is more magical. This is romantic. It was it was a total romance. We could get those made. Everybody wants to do those. Everybody loves those. And I, I we love to watch them. Yeah, and I think it's awesome. I think sometimes as, as filmmakers, especially you know, in our when we take our job seriously. People might look at somebody who's like, oh, you want to make you know cheesy romantic movies? Yes, I do. <laughs> because it makes me happy to make them yeah. and to watch them. And there's an audience for them. Like I'll let you do all of the dramatic, dark, you know, a lot of women like to make very dark, dark movies. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, hey, love it. Do your thing. Cause there's <laughs> art for that. But I spent the last two days watching Emily in Paris. Have you watched it yet? No, because I'll tell you, Number one, I have to do, watch it while I'm on my spin bike because I know I'm going to get emotional because I already miss Paris so much. Because so oh, I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm anticipating an emotional breakdown. So if I'm not like exercising, I'll just be sitting on my crouch drinking and crying. So that's the pro. That's that's the setup I'm trying to build for myself. <laughs> but I know I'm going to love it. Like it's yeah. going to be my favorite thing that's happened in years. Horrible and lovely. And I even thought, why am I not living in Paris? Why do I? Um, it's it's great. And I always love anything Darren Starr does. So it's just along the lines. But my point is there's an audience for that. And we need, you know, it's fine that we make that. And playing with Beethoven is kind of that middle ground of like, it is more of a drama. It's a romantic drama. Um, there's a little comedy in it. But there's, I think there's an audience for that, you know, like. Yeah. I mean, I would think for me, playing with Beethoven was like a perfect kind of teen romance film like honestly like it has a natural drama in it but it has natural comedy it's just human but i think that's what makes it charming i'm always one that i, I mean i love the kind of over the top romance but i also love the ones that feel a little bit more dropped in and i don't think it makes it any less romantic you know just because it's maybe a little bit more real if anything i think oh, that we had a very weird um the, the script was never written for them to be like super like fall in love romance, you know, uh, which now looking back, I kind of wish I would have built a lot more of that, like hmm. romance and that breath with each other um, in there. But it's interesting that the actors we picked, I don't, they would have never really worked in a super romance. They work yeah. better as friends that could possibly be falling in love because they're, you know, like it's, it kind of works for them. There's that kid that too. Them that work, yeah. So there was a chemistry that Naomi and Eric had that was just really interesting. The whole thing, it was, just, it was one of my favorite experiences to watch the actors. It really was because you didn't know. I think I didn't ever know what to expect from their performances, and that's what I really enjoyed about it. That I was continuously surprised because you know some people, you know what you're going to get but I was actually getting to watch the movie while we were filming it, which I don't think you can get all the time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So what is your dream role? 
Oh my God. I mean, I feel like as with everything, it's a huge juxtaposition for me. It's like, I would love to carve out a piece in the Apatow world because I just think my humor fits there so well, but period dramas are my life. <laughs> so it's like, it's either or, you know, it's, I don't, I've, I've accepted long ago that my eyes aren't big enough to be in the Tim Burton universe as much as I want. And I don't think you can get those plastic surgery bigger. So, you know, just like a solid period drama, you know, put me, put me in the Victorian age, you know, straddle me in some corsets and. God, I feel like at some point I just get so uncomfortably exhausting. Yeah, probably. <laughs> at least in the Avatar world, you are, kind, that is really a great world for you. Like you really, like that is your humor. That's where you fit. That's where you're, cause it's like smart humor. Yeah. And it kills me. And I love the people and I think it's, it's just, it's quirky enough, but it's funny enough. And it's my humor. It's like, I want to be in the things that I would want to watch. And I want to watch that. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning mm -hmm. on our little PWB Live. We're thank loving you. the audience. You guys are tuning in and you're watching and you're sticking with us through this long journey we've been on. Uh, the latest update is we are about to get our final sweet and sound this week. We are about to get our new artwork this week. We are so close to being ready to go up and uh, you'll be able to get us on Amazon. We're hoping for November at this point, but you know, there's a lot of pieces you got to do, but uh, we are very, very close. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Malia, for joining us. And see you next Monday.